Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. Today we, um, and for the next two weeks leading up to Advent, we have the book of Revelation in our first reading. And it's worth pointing out um, that these next two weeks we get an extra special blessing from John. Um, as he says, blessed is, are those who read this book out loud. So Tom got an extra blessing this morning reading out loud from by St. John. And then also blessed are those who hear, that be us, and those who heed the words written in the book. So you can get three blessings if you, if you read out loud, listen, and heed the words that are written in this book. So we get extra blessings these next two weeks coming to, to Mass, or at least if you just read it out loud on your own, you can still receive those same blessings. Um, it's good, worth it to read out loud and uh, on your own as well, because as you know, the church she just takes little uh, snippets here and there. So we skip a lot as we're just kind of racing through 20 chapters, you know, in 10 days. So I encourage you to always read on your own to get the full, the full uh, picture, the full letter. Uh, today, we also, so we just got four verses, just really that blessing from chapter one, and then he jumped right away to chapter two, uh, the first five verses. Uh, chapter two and chapter three are letters to uh, seven, small, seven churches. Uh, they're kind of like saying, good job on this and do better on that. <laughs> and if you do better on that, then I'll give you this blessing as well uh, on top of, of that. Uh, and so today we, we hear the first one to Ephesus. Um, and so it sounds like they're doing a lot well, you know. Jesus is telling him, I know your works and your labor and your endurance, that you cannot tolerate the wicked. Sounds good, you know. Or that you cannot tolerate evil persons. You have even tested those who call themselves apostles but are not, and you discover they are imposters. They are false, false bishops, huh? So, moreover, you have endurance and you have suffered for my name and you have not grown weary so they have grown stubborn for righteousness huh or stubborn against against wickedness at least which is good we need that but that's only half half of what we need we see i hold this one thing against you you have lost the love you had at first another translation says you have abandoned the fir your first love, or you have left your first love. You lost the love you had at first. You know, so you have to go back to the very beginning. What well, was the first time you experienced or got excited about Jesus? You know? And, and uh, how wonderful was the faith and how rich was his presence sitting there and experiencing the sacraments and the Eucharist and when all those things really began to come alive and you were awakened to, to those things and then you were eager to serve, to serve the one you love, to serve his people in different ways. And so you began serving and uh, pretty soon you got burned out because the church gave you too much to do. <laughs> <laughs> right? There's a, the ones who do serve, they usually do get burned out eventually because there's only a few who are actually serve, and so they end up serving in about 10 different areas. Yeah? Because the other 80% are lazy. I'm doing little pokes here. And so, uh, not everybody carries their own weight. So you can, you know, we can begin, we first fall in love with God, and then we want to serve God. And then we begin serving him, and then we, get, we can serve him. We get too much work, too much pressure. Or in the midst of the serving, we're also, as they say, they're, they're doing here, encountering many evils and having to resist a lot of evils or resist false teachings and false doctrines or those who are trying to change church, church teaching, you know, or water it down. Or I've got all these cafeteria Catholics who are picking and choosing, and I'm a Catholic, but I'm not this. And so, you know, it gets really frustrating. Well, you're just trying to serve the Lord and his, the fullness of his truth, and you've got all these other people who are just taking what they like and just trying to emphasize that and really change the church teaching and change the, the, what the church looks like. And after a little bit, it can become very cynical, and you can become very jaded. 
And you can lose your focus from your first love, and you only are focusing on the wicked. Look what these people are trying to do now. Look what they're trying to sneak in the church over here. And look what this bishop said over here. And now there's this priest over here. And what the heck is a pope saying now? Right? And you can all of a sudden lose focus, and you're only talking about the evil and the wicked and the frustrations and all this world is, you know, going to hell in a handbasket. And who, we, come on, Lord, come back now quickly. <laughs> Uh, and we're serving hard and resisting and we're fighting to keep what is rightfully ours to keep the truth of the faith going but then we lose our we forget about our first love and we're, because we're just so in the in the midst of the fighting and the resisting and the fighting and the resisting and we forget why we were doing all this to begin with you know we wake up frustrated and go to bed frustrated. And all throughout the day we're reading these different letters or watching videos that either we're finding or people are sending us and we're getting frustrated. We're forgetting we forgot our first love. We forgot the first reason why Jesus called us to follow him. I, fought, I called you to be with me and then that I would send you out to serve with me. First to be with me. If we don't have constantly coming back every day to that source of love and feeding that relationship, then we get jaded. We get, we've seen jaded priests, huh? Cynical, jaded priests who can stand up here and talk about God's love, but they don't even smile while they're doing it, you know? It's like, what happened, Father? Huh? And sometimes it's, uh, you know, this happens with parents a lot, too. You're always giving, 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 and pouring out your love, pouring out your love, pouring out your love, but it's not always coming back reciprocal. And so if you don't have that place where you're constantly going to get filled back up with the love from your spouse or from God or both, you just end up empty and dry but still trying to give, trying to love, trying to serve, but you're empty and you're dry. And you, you wither up. And if, you're not, if you've never experienced that, God bless you. Either you've stayed close to your source of love or you haven't been serving. <laughs> but it's a good reminder for us that John's giving not just to Ephesus, but to all of us, because he... He says this is for everybody who reads this, everybody who hears this, that they may heed it. For us to always do these little self-checks, you know, where are we uh, in our relationship with our first love? Have we let all the constant uh, wickedness that comes out in the news all the time and the evil and the different attacks and different sides of the church, the different watering down of the church or the cafeteria Catholics or, you know, if we let all of that make us cynical, jaded. It's one thing to, um, it's the first step to resist evil with all that you have. That's another thing. The next step is to learn to respond to the evil and the wickedness and the suffering with love. One thing to resist it, it's another thing to respond to it with love, the sacrificial love. And we see the wicked and the evilness and the experience of suffering and the different dramas, you know. Does it urge us out of love for Jesus and for his people to then do penance for them, to fast for them, to do prayers for them, to sacrifice our life for them? Because the natural temptation when we experience drama and complaints and suffering at different levels and frustrations is that it, it thickens your skin. You get thick skin, but then you can also get a calloused heart. And a hardened heart that grows cold. And so when that's there, then we need to get filled back up with Jesus. Let his Holy Spirit, the dew of the Holy Spirit, soften our hearts again. Fill us back up and renew us with love. And we have to enter into sacrificial 
giving of our life love. Get hardened in sacrificial love. I'm going to lay it down no matter what. That kind of stubbornness. That's the next step that Jesus is asking of Ephesus and of us. You know, so if you find yourself full of all the bad news out there in the world or in the church and just frustrated, let it break your heart. Let it break your heart so that you'll lay down your life in sacrifice for their conversion, for the change, for God's grace to hopefully come in. That's where John wants us to get. That's where Jesus wants us to get. First step, resist with all your might. Second step, respond with all your love. Jesus, thank you so much for your constant, never-ending love that flows and is being poured out uh, to come into our lives. We pray you just open our minds, open our hearts, open our lives to receive the constant outpouring of your love so we can always be filled up and overflowing and we can serve people, serve your church out of the overflow of the love we experience with you. We pray if there's any way we have become um, jaded or cynical or hardened in the wrong way that you would you would soften us and heal us with your love uh, bring us all back today give us give us a, a good memory and a good feeling of that first love that first time we experienced um, innocent love with you let that just re- let that let just renew um, the flame of uh, the flame of love in our hearts for you and move us to to get out of our comfort zones more and more to serve you in whatever ways you're you're leading us. We pray these things together in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand together and offer some more prayers to our Father.